What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Part two. Everybody enjoyed the first one so much. We're going to do a part two. Uh, to all the Wessonites, calm down. <coughs> Excuse me. Calm down. And um, there were a lot of people that were bent out of shape. About me talking about how, and they came to to Wes's rescue when he was talking about um, we didn't come out for 14 months because they wanted us to wear shower shoes. And there were people that got at me, and they were like, "Hey, that's a true thing, homie. You don't come out like that." And where were you at? And, <laughs> and that's so hilarious to me. So before we even get to the video, let's address that. Because that that seemed and oh and the the heroin thing the the ounce of course it's a pedazo but I wasn't gonna get into all that because then I would have had a million comments what's a pedazo you know what I'm saying what's a piece of dope I would have had to explain all that so you know you can't please everybody and if you try nobody will like it so as far as the shower shoot thing let's let's get something clear here okay so Wes was in he was out of state when that took place right. No disrespect to anybody out there, but obviously out of state, there were no legends. Um, there were, weren't people that were um, groomed by them in person from the shoe. Um, and, 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 and then um, shout out to the, the prison guard, Hector Bravo. Shout out to Hector. Hector got at me and he was like, hey, look, when I was in Sentinella, when I was, a, you know, when he was a cop in Sentinella, that that's how they ran the shower, the shower program and that the Southerners and the whites wouldn't come out because they were making them um, shower and shower shoes. And so this was my question. OK, we're going to get into the whole thing. But and this was my question to, to Hector. Was the tower cop popping doors or were these dudes under escort? And I asked it for a specific reason. I know for a fact in any of the prisons up north, any of the 180s up north, the cops aren't going to dictate it like that, right? And Hector said, oh, the, the tower cop was um, popping doors. And I just laughed, right? Because I was like, if a cop isn't coming to my cell, right? Just putting my back, my, my, myself back in prison in that mindset. If a, if a cop isn't uh, coming to my cell to cuff me up and cuff my cell up and escort us to, to the showers, if he opens a door and I step out with tennis shoes, what's he going to do? Hey, get back in your cell. Yeah, I will in a minute. Oh. I got five minutes to shower. I'm going to run the tier for five minutes. That's what I've seen anywhere I go. Right now. Little history for these guys, because I think most of these guys that are talking that butt shit, um, they came around way later. New Folsom. Prior to them making the standalone unit. Back when. Ad Sagan, New Folsom was A5 and A6. A5 was more of the knucklehead building, especially A section, violence control unit. When you would, when you would get to Ad Sagan, you would get a shoe size, right? They would ask you your shoe size. In front of the yard, in, in front of each section, they had these cubby holes. They had a cell number. Your shoes went there. There were state slip-on shoes. You were not allowed to have tennis shoes inside of the unit you think motherfuckers there's dudes that are being ad sake four or five years fighting a case you think they're not going to shower for four or five years come on man common sense there were legends all the time in that ad say there was no tennis shoes in the housing back then you came out for your showers in your shower shoes so all that tough guy shit oh they where the fuck were you at you man? <laughs> anyway so there's that right so put that in your pipe and smoke it um, so we're going to get back to the, we're going to finish this up. We're going to have a little bit, a little bit more fun. Um, Wes is a character. And, 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 and then I, <laughs> there's a lot of people that are like, well, what are you going to do if you run into Wes? What am I supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? Like we run into each other. Hey, what's up? Homie? Hey, what's up? All right now. It's not like I would ever hang out with somebody like that. It's not like he would hang around with me. Cause his his I, his stories wouldn't impress me and and wouldn't fly. It'd be like, come on now, come on, Wes. I'm not buying in your program, big dog. You know what I'm saying? Save that story. That might be worth something later. 
in one of your videos. <laughs> but anyways, let's get this. From Playboys, I mean, who else fucking uh, uh, Robert Kaufman fucking, uh, what the fuck did they call him again? God damn, he was Making from, uh, he, he was from uh, um, Harbor Area. What was that, the name of that fucking gang of Harbor Area? You don't need to say it. Oh, fucking a long time. But, um, yeah, dude, these just fucking crazy motherfuckers. Prison's crazy, bro. But right. the whole the whole thing behind it is, is prison taught me how to live a militant routine. Oh. Mm -hmm. And in that militant routine, I was able to just find peace. Oh. And then I come out here and everybody's so comfortable. The militant routine was the answer to their comfort to make them a more disciplined individual to be They were already comfortable. So let me come out here and rile them up. Look at how little his fucking his hand is, eh? That wrist, that watch is gonna fall off in a second, big dog. Be careful. Can somebody hand him that coffee mug? <laughs> Strong enough to even mitigate the negative thoughts that people call anxiety and <laughs> and, uh, and depression and all these bullshit ass made up things. People don't die from skin cancer in prison. People. Don't okay, hold on. Uh, mental issues are very serious. Very serious. Um, I lost my mother to that. You know, she committed suicide. Obviously, that's a de that's a depressive state. There are a lot of people out there who suffer from PTSD, um, having done real time in prison, not this dorm living. Um, you know, I skipped the part in there, and I, I don't know how why I skipped that part where he said he was in a level two dorm that was um, 180 design. He said it in this video. He said it in another video too. Absolutely impossible. How do you have a level how do you have a 180 design dorm? The dorm doesn't have sections. A 180 design, he obviously doesn't know what a 180 is. There's a, a wall in between every section. It's the most secured housing units in California other than the shoe. And, uh, you know, the shoe doesn't basically doesn't exist anymore. But I think this is very disrespectful. I get it because he's trying to get people who are suffering from anxiety and depression to bite into his oh holy shit instead of paying uh their their psychiatrist or their psychologist or their clinician whatever it is 500 a month they're just oh well shit maybe if i just pay him 2500 a month i'll be cured and i think that's dangerous man i think it's disrespectful people don't die from cancer people don't die that's a see this dude <clears throat> There was a thing, and first of all, I don't know if people die from skin cancer in prison, but I do know you don't get enough sun, but you do get the deadliest part of the day in the sun. I will say that. But uh, again, it's not like you're in the sun all day, every day, unless you're yard crew. <clears throat> I, knew, I do know for a fact, a lot of people had died in prison from cancer. So I just don't get, you know, he's... You know, it's it's obvious that Wes has done time with people that were doing a year, two years, three years max. So, of course, they came in. They were probably he did time around a bunch of fucking dudes in their 20s that were still healthy. They did three years, probably one year with him. Of course, he's not going to see the the wear and tear that you see in a, in a level four when you you're on a prison yard with a dude that's been there 40 fucking years. You know what I'm saying? I've seen dudes go into medical and you could look at them and they're gray, they're clammy, they're sweaty. And you know, this dude's dying right now. And I've seen that happen. And I've seen those dudes get sent back to their cell. You're okay. You're fine. And by morning, they're dead. So this dude can say all he wants, but he was in low level prisons with healthy youngsters. You get around these older dudes, like I said, that have 20, 30, 40 years in. You start seeing the cancer. You start seeing uh, heart failure, stroke, heart attack. You know, so I just, you know, that type of stuff right there, I think is very wrong to be putting out there. I, people don't have anxiety. People aren't. <clears throat> Everyone has anxiety. It's how you manage anxiety. In Pelican Bay Shoe. That's the place where you see the highest level of PTSD, especially people that did years back there. They're not going to admit it, but they, they suffer from anxiety. That's part of their PTSD. You know, someone who has done time in a dorm. I'm not saying dorm living isn't dangerous. 
YA, the most dangerous YAs were the ones with dorms because you couldn't hide behind a wall. You couldn't hide in your cell. You know, if, you're, if your neighbor had a battery pack and felt like getting you in the middle of the night, he would. You don't really hear about that in the CDC dorms. But, um, again, this just goes back to who he did time around and what he did time around, you know. Aren't depressed. Like, that's only out here. Like, really? Yeah, they don't have that shit. Motherfuckers are on the yard just fucking baking, you know. They're just getting their bright red purplish. They don't have skin cancer, bro. That, <laughs> that doesn't exist in prison. Hey, red died of skin cancer. They kill you out here with that shit. It's fake. Really? Fuck, it's just fake as fuck. They're like, no, really, I got melanoma. West. I'm like, why? Because the doctor told you, and then he fucking put you on some shit and killed your ass. You stupid motherfucker. <laughs> but okay, so are you, you're saying I do agree that they're. Nah, I'm not going to get into the whole medical thing. This is, but that's that's. How many people have lost family members, moms to cancer, and you got this jackass with this Louis Vuitton fucking shirt, skin tight jeans, these bottles. When when that, this interview was over guarantee they were fucking complimenting each other on the tightness of their motherfucking jeans. <laughs> and that you think that when people are locked up, they somehow like the, the stress just doesn't exist in the same way. No, it feels just, like it would be incredibly you do, you stressful. Don't, you don't let people have it. If you're not allowed to have anxiety, it doesn't exist. If like you're sitting there going, Hey, I have anxiety. Hey, Adam, I got anxiety. You'd be like, shut the fuck up, dude. Don't fucking say that shit. But, okay. That's, completely different things yeah they'll tell you shut the fuck up maybe even whack you that doesn't mean it goes away if anything it intensifies you know and like that's like i was saying some people learn to deal with it other people don't and they go insane you know or or, or they get on meds and, and you know they go into the psych wards and you know um eop whatever but to say that if you're not allowed yeah you're not allowed to run around and and and, and have that conversation in prison right Hey, you know what, bro? I'm feeling pretty depressed today. What? What the fuck? What the fuck am I? A fucking psychologist? Calm down with that shit, homie. Don't even let the homies hear that. It might whack you. Yeah, that 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 conversation could be had. But that doesn't mean he's like, oh fuck, they'll whack me. Well, shit, I don't want to be. I don't have anxiety anymore. Then doesn't work that way. That's uh, and, and 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 anxiety, by the way, is it's an emotional issue more than a mental. Right. People, it, 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 it you know, you got to go to mental health for it, but it's more of an emotional thing. But, uh, you know, OK, I'm, I'm picturing I'm in prison and I'm laying in bed, freaking the fuck out. My girl's going to leave me. My kid's going to hate me. Yeah, but this is anxiety that I'm Demon? dealing with. And I feel like yeah, you'd have uh -huh. to accept it. Then you would come to come up with like now you start to come up with like fail safes mm -hmm. and belief systems and the true solutions to problems. So you'd be like, oh, well, I'd love her anyways. So, you know, hey, my girl's going to leave me. Oh, well, I love her anyways. Right. My kid's going to hate me. Oh, well, I love him anyways. So at a certain and point, you just have to a, let go At a control. certain point, you release what you want to possess. Right then, you're releasing fear. You're releasing all these fucking feelings, and you're possessing what you're releasing out to the universe, you know? And so at that point, you start to realize, oh, shit, if I release love to my chick, even though she's with another dude on the street, I'm free. So then you start to really be able to control yourself. So I teach people all this shit, like from my years of fucking fighting problems and being like that and being in isolation. I teach people the fail safes. Uh, Wes, when were you in isolation? You were in dorms. You were in dorms fucking smoking meth and what do you call it? parachuting meth? And <laughs> the mindset tactics and the belief <laughs> systems and the way to operate to where nothing can fuck with you like you can nothing can fucking phase you right so did you have a girl when you went in yeah yeah she fucking ended sancho answered one time and i was pissed <laughs> wait how long how many uh, years did you make it or uh, i was like eight years in like this dude val from, eight years in so almost the whole fucking oh term God. you know what let's let's You've been, yeah, you were talking part. to her and she was holding on hand. and off like she she, oh, okay. she gave me like money to girls on on plenty of fish and shit like that is this like just like a game you're playing while you're I in had there one come visit me one visited yeah. you you didn't get the conjugal visit or anything no you no. can't you, conjugal visit you, takes, you have to be married right? takes like time you know and they took those away at a lot of prison. but you're getting girls to send you money and shit off these dating yeah, sites yeah. One, or anything one time a girl bought me a phone oh really okay. when i was down but then once i get a phone then i'm cracking them cracking again <laughs> um i wish i could remember the video that he said everywhere he went he took phones he said how he took them, 
And then he said he would get there and he had all of them, that everybody had to come to him. But now he can convince one chick to visit him and he can convince one chick to get him a phone. But once he got that phone, it was on and cracking. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So what what's going on in your mind as your release date starts to approach? Like, I didn't want to leave. Wow. Really? So like on my last day, they're like, watch and roll it up. And I'm like... I'm eating my oatmeal, dog. And the guy's like, you get to go. I said, I'm going to finish my fucking food, you know. Uh -huh. I don't even want to go, dude. I don't give a fuck. It's not real. I'm not really going anywhere. You just couldn't believe I've it? I've been in prison for two nights. I didn't even care. It's not even real. I'm like, I'm... So I... <laughs> this dude's hardened, man. He's institutionalized. You know what I mean? He needed to have his, his oatmeal with peanut butter in it. You know, because... The streets aren't real, you know. He's lived a hard fucking life in that dorm, man, you know. And he never once wore shower shoes. And he talked to everybody in sign language. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. What the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, I'm in the van. It's not even real. My homie picks me up. It ain't even real. Oh Nothing real. It took me like a year for anything to even be real, you know. What did you spend the first year doing? I was at my grandma's house, so I had to move back in with my grandma at 35, oh. and I had to live on a twin bed in the same room with my parents. So I'm living on a twin bed in the same room with my parents at 35, and I'm fucking happy. I'm grateful. I'm. F Hold on. Do we rewind it a, just a couple seconds where nothing was real for the whole year, but now he's in the same room at 35 with his mom and dad under grandma's roof. Hey, he's happy. He's just I have it. Which one is it, Wes? See, he falls out of the character now and then and like a little speck of truth will come in and let's see where he goes for it. Hold on. Free. Like, so your parents are living with your grandma as yeah, well? Yeah, parents are my grandma. And what, what are they up to at that point? Uh, they're not doing too well. Really? Yeah, because I, I used to do a lot to help the family before I got busted. Uh -huh. They never got a place of their own after. Really? They live with her the whole time. And, and what's the mood when they see you for the first time? And they years? were just scared that I was going to be a weirdo, you know? A weirdo. Like yeah, just... I thought I was going to be like off the charts like crazy or something. Mm. But uh, but then the, the fucking, um, I'm just banging away on my phone, posting on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, what are you doing? You need to get a job. I'm like, just hold up. Like, I got this. Just chill. I got this. And they're like, just keep sweating me, keep sweating me, keep sweating me. And then I start making it work, you know? I start making some money online. I make like, you know, 800 bucks to 3,000 a month. And then um, then I go tell my story on like prison talk with Big Herc. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I start going viral on YouTube. Shut now, up Big Herc, that's the one I watched. Yeah, yeah. yeah so now I, now I had, um, now I had a, a system to collect money for training and nutrition. And now I had a lot of fucking traffic. Like I was going viral as fuck, like 3 million views per video. Mm -hmm. Do we check? Three million per video. He, hey, this bottle doesn't stop selling, and I respect that. But the proof is in the pudding, no? You go to his video, and you see some of them have, which is great, way more than me, 100,000 views, 500,000 views. It's three million views per video. And, um, and now I started making like three, seven, ten grand a day. And like for the first three, four months, I didn't tell anyone. I was scared. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck, what the fuck? And I'm just clocking, bro. And no, my parents don't know, my grandma don't know, and I'm making like 150 grand a month. You know? And I, I don't even have a car. I didn't buy a car until I had like 500, 600,000 saved. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so then like, I finally, one day I was sitting there and my grandma was tripping about her fucking, uh, her credit card. And I'm like, I'm like, hand it to me. And she's like, what do you mean? And, I, and she hands it to me and I, I just type all the numbers in, call my bank. Type it in, pay it off. I hand it to her. I said, I just paid it. I bet I've been, been making 150 grand a month for like the last six months. I'm fucking out, you know? And she's like, no way. And now none of them fuck with me. My parents don't fuck with me. Why? Grand, uh, just exactly. um, a lot of arguments. Relationships. Like, first, my ex wife and my mom didn't get along. And I chose my marriage over kind of my mom. Mm. And then, um, then now, even my mom came back in the picture for like a few uh, holidays. <sighs> 
But he's got great relationship advice for you. <laughs> Just pay the fee and he can tell you how to fucking uh, fix your marriage, fix your life, get everything together. And then um, we didn't get along about something. And then uh, now they just fucking hate me. But um, even my ex chick. How does a parent hate a child, let alone both parents? Right? Isn't it where, like, maybe one would be like, look, your dad, especially a, a father son, that's understandable where there's going to, there could be a lot of um, ego in the ways, in the way of each other. But mom, mom's going to be like, look, you know, your dad's tripping, but, you know, I'm here. To have both your parents and, and is grandma out of the picture too? That I recently broke up with before I got this new chick. Like my mom started befriending. They always befriend my mom. Like mm. to like as in like hating on me, you know. Yeah. And so now they became friends and shit. <laughs> when you get money, people are just fucking, they, they want you to do shit for them that's so fucking unreasonable. It's crazy. Like what? It's like pay for shit. Yeah. Like my ex chick called it breadcrumbs and I gave her 500,000 the first year we were well, I'm sure she exhibited signs before you uh, married her that um, she was more interested in your money than you. And that's got to be a thing, you know, where when you get that much money and you dress, I mean, you're, you're, if, for the, an example, he's got this Louis Vuitton shirt on and, he, and, and you know, there's a, there's a certain type of female that's going to see that and be like, hmm. And then they start adding up in their mind what your outfit costs and realize, okay, this dude has money. So you're broadcasting before you even said a word to this woman, you know, and, and, and you try to engage with this woman. Maybe she, you know, you run into a woman you think is fine as hell and you want to get to know her. And she's going to show you the, all the, the side of her that, that you, she thinks you want, that you're, you're letting her know you need. But her motivations may be different because of you, you're broadcasting your money. So that might be on you, Wes. We're fucking... We were dating. Really? Yeah. Like she said, you gave me breadcrumbs. I'm like, bitch, I gave you like a $50,000 check on Valentine's Day. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, whoever gave you that much? She's like, yeah, but it was breadcrumbs to you. And I'm like, Jesus. Like, so I was just like, she was a sweetheart. I, lo I loved her to death. I still love her. But this is I, the one that I saw making videos calling you out and shit? Oh, no, that was my other one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my ex-wife. <laughs> I clicked on some commentary channel talking about some video, your girl freaking out. That was my ex-wife. Come on, Wes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she went crazy. Just, just skip a little bit. He's got to have something else for her. already us, been right? through all that. Right. Yeah. But you used to do the jealous thing more? Oh, well, I oh, wanted God, it to I work. So I shit off. actually fucking, like, <laughs> try to fucking argue with a chick or something. Now I'm like, hey, if you disturb my peace, you're fucking leaving. Yeah. Like in uh, and if you if you cheat on me, if you fucking hit me, or if you talk about calling cops, we're done. Got it. So there's nothing in you that makes you want to watch all of your peers on YouTube and stuff to like know what's out there. I don't do. I, if something lands in front of my face, I watch it. Right, because I heard you saying that you're an Andrew Tate fan. Yeah, they land in front of my face, and I'm like, oh, that's right. dope. It's hard to avoid. Yeah, it, yeah. So, yeah. If something lands on me, I'm like, oh, that was meant to be. It was dope. I love that. Mm. But I, I don't really have time to even tie my fucking shoes. I can't really. Like, go seeking videos, you know? Right. And I don't want to be, like... You time to tell you shit. Like, I wouldn't want to watch something you, you still got like feet on. You were in that right, right? I, <laughs> I, like, I developed that. Like, then my content that I'm doing that day will be, like, part of what you and that guy were talking about. You, you're not, you're, you're like no fun right now, Unauthentic Wes. to me. Come on. We're, right. we're, like, I don't like to... Let's skip way over here. I'm fresh out of there. I mean, just first off, like, I started selling programs. My programs go from two ninety nine a month to two. Nope. Nope. We don't want to know the prices. We appreciate you for being here, Wes. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your shirt. Hopefully you don't move too fast and your fucking tight ass pants explode off your body. Um, because Adam will definitely want to help you get dressed. <laughs> Woo. Anyways, part two was kind of bunk today, huh? I might have to do another video for you guys. But I really wanted to thank you guys for uh, um, tapping in with yesterday's video. Hopefully, you tap in with this one. This one wasn't as good. He wasn't giving us enough. I should have went back to the beginning parts I skipped. I think it was like the first five minutes he was saying crazy ass shit. I thought it'd be, you know, more of it. But I guess he's showing a different part of himself, which is good. Um, anyhow, it's my video for today. Um, everybody, please be safe. Be smart and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.